But uh, I guess the person I appreciate the most that's here physically in this class is uh, Joan right now and Mike now because we thought we were going to start the class with only people on this side of the classroom. And now it will be more balanced because, you know. <clears throat> so thank you, too, for your attendance. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, did we turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? <clears throat> we were talking about reconciliation, and, and uh, the Lord really, uh, just on my own, um, has been sharing with me even more. In fact, I'll be honest with you, uh, I had to rush to, to just sort of get all this put down and uh, <clears throat> wanted to, um, to just take a little further look at that, at, at the reconciliation. And I don't, think we, I don't think we moved off of it from the last class, so anybody watching the videos in a row, it'll, it'll fit right in and flow. And uh, by the way, we've got uh, Carolyn Hands, is that right? Scott's mom. Scott's mom. Sharon, hello Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Susan Noel is on there? No, she's fine. She, that, her connection is tough. Tony and Heather? Good to see you guys. Oh yeah, I can't see you. Is that all? Okay. Um, Doug is uh, off in California and he's, um, is he taking the test right now? Okay, starting to be trained to be a truck driver. And um, that will be better for him physically. He was doing hard, difficult, taxing work on his body and he's, he's not a young man anymore. <laughs> Mallory? Yeah, yeah, he called me uh, last night. <laughs> I think it was last night or the night before. I got him and then Matt and then s someone else. And I went for about six hours straight on the phone, which most of y'all know that's that takes God for me to. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I carry one, but I don't want it. I don't want anybody calling me. I'm teasing. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> it's a good way just not to get a reply. Okay, um, this is uh, called reconciliation based upon kind, kind being in uh, parentheses, and of course we're not talking about being kind to animals, we're talking about a particular kind of being. And, um, but reconciliation obviously has to do with our salvation, and in order to really understand um, our salvation, you have to understand reconciliation. That's my opinion. I don't believe, I don't believe a person really does have a full or a, or a really good grasp of their salvation unless they understand reconciliation. However, I personally believe to really understand reconciliation, you need to understand God because there is nothing that proceeds from God that is eternal that is not tied to him in his being. In other words, he's not just doing stuff. It, you know, if it's going to be eternal, it's going to be out from him, a part of him, seen in him in some form. And... Uh, you know, the Bible begins, in the beginning, God, okay. Everything, everything comes out from there, you know what I mean? And uh, that's just a scriptural way of looking at it. But then spiritually, you know that to be true. Well, let's just say uh, uh, word-wise, you know it to be true because of the, uh, that meaning eternal without beginning and without end. Uh, therefore, that has to be something in relationship to being in Christ or in, in God in some manner. And uh, 
to sort of illustrate this, although I've already written some things on the board, I'll just write this little um, thought. And that is, when we think of God, okay, God equals the Father, right? God equals the Father. But the Son, and I'll write it just below it, and it's not going to be too clear from there, but the, uh, but, sorry, but that which is, let's see, I think I wrote something down here. Okay, we'll just call it Jesus equals the Son. All right. Now that's very telling, actually. I mean, it's very telling because it's telling us something about God. I mean, you know, God is called Father and, and Jesus is called Son. And um, it is expressing things about him. It's not just theology. It's not just a random name. You know, God goes, oh, let's see. I think I want to be called Father, you know. And Jesus goes, you know, or, you know Son. And the Holy Spirit goes, I'll be called the Holy Spirit, whatever. But rather, there is um, everything he does, he, it comes from life and reality. It's not, God is not religious. <laughs> well, we are religious, but God is not religious. And um, uh, so, and again, I wrote most of this stuff real quick today. So I'll just read some of the statements I made in relationship to that. Within the being of God is this father thing. Can you tell I wrote it today? Within the being of God is this father thing, this desire to put what is within him into others, hence son. Okay? Not just knowledge or ability, but a participation into himself, which is wonderful. I mean, I just got chills because of the wonder of a, of a God that would really want that us to participate into his life and into his spirit. Um, so not just a knowledge or an ability, because religion can give you that. Religion can give you that. And you can, you can have that and still not have a real reality of the Lord. Hence the Pharisees. <clears throat> um, a father passes on himself to a son. Not just a teacher to an apprentice, because he's called father. And he's fathering something into existence. But what it is, is more of him, but in a different form, son form. But, you're, but you are glimpsing in, when you call it, when you say God and Jesus, you're saying father and son, and you're you're. The Holy Spirit is allowing you, if you will, to um, get past names and theological concepts that we've built around this stuff and to glimpse into, into the being, because that's, that's a being thing. That's something within God that wants to impart of himself. <clears throat> all right. So... This is all very, very important to reconciliation because my statement in the beginning was in order to understand our salvation, you have to understand reconciliation. But to really understand reconciliation, you have to understand God. And when I'm saying understanding God, I'm particularly referring to this naming of himself, Father. Because he could have picked anything, you know. And Jesus, who knows him best, is the one who kept calling him Father. Because the Jews, you know, the Jews knew a lot of names about God, and a lot of it pertained to what he did for them or can do for you. But Jesus knew him in, in his essence, in his substance, in his, in his heart. You know, I mean, in, in the real thing that he is, not just what he can do, you know. Uh, the example I've used often is you could have a, a carpenter 
that could, let's just say that he was more than a carpenter, let's say, well, let's say that he, he could make fine furniture and he could make beautiful furniture with, with beautiful carvings and engravings like tables and bedsteads and all of this and he could make all of that stuff and people could come into his shop and just go, oh my God, I've never seen anything so beautiful. But when he goes home, he gets drunk and beats his wife and kids. And I'm not saying that God is that way. I'm saying it is possible to do beautiful things publicly and not be that way inwardly, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, God does beautiful things. He did beautiful things for Israel. Uh, I mean, there were some hard things, too. But in none of those did anybody ever come along the way Jesus did and only called him Father. You know, not Almighty God, El Shaddai, you know what I mean. I mean, you know, I mean, if you, can you imagine Jesus hearing somebody touting these names in a wrong spirit or, or making it so religious that, you know, trying to pump people up instead of bringing them to the heart of the Lord, you know. I mean, I'm picturing sitting in Nazareth and Jesus is sitting there, you know, and he's, you know, 21 or 17. Let's make him 17. And somebody goes, yeah, oh, shut up. And Jesus goes, oh, shut up. You know? <laughs> now, Jesus would never do that. We know he would never do that. I'm only funning with you. But there is that truth, isn't there? There is that truth that Jesus knew this heart of, you know, I mean, what greater joy to call somebody according to what their heart is. You know, and Jesus called him Father, the one who by his very nature wants to bring forth something beyond himself that is still of himself. <clears throat> all right. Uh, so, let's see, did I read all of that? Um, the, the great goal of God was that we would participate in him, not just with him. Israel participated with him. Amen? I mean, they had God in their midst, in the... In the wilderness, he was right there in the tabernacle, in the midst of them, and yet he was only with them. He was not in them. They weren't participating in his life. They were participating in what he could do for them or perform for them. <clears throat> All right. So um, uh, over in, uh, well, we can go ahead and turn there. In Genesis, <clears throat> you get a little glimpse of this in the first chapter. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, and of course, you know, we quoted 1-1, one, one, in the beginning, God, and, and, yet, and yet it doesn't say, in the beginning, God was a father. You're going to, he's not going to lay that on the table at the first moment just because you want to read about God in a book. I mean, does that make sense? I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna do that. He, there are things that are precious to him. He's the one through Jesus who told us, you know, don't cast your pearls before it's wine, unless they trample it, and you know, this is this is precious to him. And yet, you begin to see, even in that same first chapter, uh, verse twenty-six, Genesis one twenty-six, and God said, "Let us make man." Okay, let us make. Man, all right, so right, if you stop right there, what you have is you could have a carpenter. Let, you know, let's make something, you know, God, here's God. Let's, let's make a table. You know, I mean, if, if you stop with those words, he doesn't have to be a father in being, does he? He can just be a maker. But the next words, let us make man in our, in our image. And if you see this, the one the Indians call the great spirit, you know, if you see this great spirit for who he is, um, you realize 
that if you're going to follow him, there is going to be a participation beyond just participating in services. Way better than services. <laughs> way, better, way better than any service I've ever been in. <clears throat> and, and so that's, that's so, you know, I mean, the Holy Spirit's, you know, right off, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the Holy Spirit's hovering on it, and he's, you know, and the, the things are without form and void, and, you know, just right off the bat you get the Spirit moving out darkness and that which is without form to form up something and, and, to, and, and to move out what is void to fill it, to fill, to fill it with himself, ultimately. It's, it's not all spelled out perfectly in Genesis, the first chapter, but we find it throughout, throughout the Bible. We find, we find that this is genuinely something that is so much a part of him that, you, that if you miss it, you may miss uh, salvation as being just a, a mechanical thing formed. And I'm fixing to address that here in just a minute. That will just save people from hell when there's so much more in his heart. So reconciliation is wrought through participation, and it is. Reconciliation is not a legal document. It is not a theological statement of what has happened. Reconciliation, as God did it and meant it, is a participation in, into him participation and it's nothing short of that there's nothing short of that if it's not that it's nothing it is that <clears throat> all right so God's goal was not just to remove our sin and in so doing save us from punishment okay but isn't that what basic Christianity believes okay that you know well, the whole goal God had, I mean, he decided he's just going to save us all from hell and show that he's really a good guy. Really? I mean, isn't that sort of petty? I mean, if, if that were really the case, would, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, I, I know I'll say things that are outlandish and, and not religious, and therefore the religious might want to kill me, okay? <laughs> I understand that. But I just try to be real, and I look and I say, if that's really it, is that really, you know, that's what God is. He just, you know, has, has just created this whole earth and life on this earth and our lives and just sort of let the devil get loose and do all this stuff. And now he's going to come in and save us and we're all going to go, oh, I will love you forever for that. I'm just thinking there's got to be more to him than that. And that's maybe that's my weird thinking. But I... Something from the very beginning, even though I loved the Lord when I met him and I, I was so grateful for his salvation as I understood it then. But in the very early stages, something said in me, something isn't right. There's more to him, yeah. you know. There's more. Now, I don't know what it is. And I, you know what? I'm still learning. I, I mean, and I've got a long way to go. And if there's been anything that's proven that, it's just my daily walk with the Lord. He continually is <laughs> just, you know, I mean, even, even this week, showing the magnitude of him and me just going, oh, my God. You know, remember what Paul said, oh, the depth, both of the glory and the, ma you know, he just goes on and on. He's, just, he's trying to tell them about him and then he gets caught up in, you know, it's like, it's like trying to describe the glory cl cloud and all of a sudden the glory cloud comes on and he just goes, oh, you know. I love that. I always love, I saw that early too. I saw that and I said, you know what, this guy is not doing this religiously. And that teaching he just said right there is not religion. It's driving that man. It's the most wonderful thing. And he's just, you know, emoting the 
the beauty of the Lord that he's seeing in it. And that makes me stop. Those kind of things when I see that. It makes me stop and it makes me say to my teacher, my guide, Holy Spirit, please, please, don't teach me. Don't give me a recipe. Don't give a poor, hungry man a recipe. Give me something to eat. You know, something real. Please. And may it be Christ. And may it please the Father. So, um, God's goal was not just to remove our sins and in so, so doing save us from punishment. Okay, so I've got, I've got some results up here. This is actually, in fact, what did I name it? I called this little list, and there's much more to it. This was what I just had to throw together because I was rushing. Um, effects, results, and consequences of sin nature. Effects, that's this little list right here. Effects, results, and consequences of sin nature. Okay, now please, if you will, I know you're all writing, but listen to this statement. Salvation at its height cannot just be the act of saving us from the effects of a sin nature, such as sickness, hell, judgment, punishment from sins, or reaping all the consequences of our sin, but must mainly be a salvation from the root or the sin nature that brought these things upon us. These are all effects. These are all consequences. This isn't what started it. And yet, much of the preaching of Christianity, and, and again, when I say stuff like that, much of the preaching, I'm not putting anybody down, and I'm not thinking I'm smarter than anybody else. It's just that I know what a lot of the preaching is, and while it's wonderful that it'll, it'll help you to navigate through certain things, you can't leave the heart of the thing out. You, you can't, which is, which is Christ. And in this case, in reconciliation, it's Christ in a very special way that's real and not in any way theological unless you make it that. It's participation with him. Can't get any better than that. I'm going to read this one again, okay? Is that okay? A little long. Salvation at its height cannot just be the act of saving us from the effects of a sin nature, such as sickness, hell, judgment, punishment for sins, or reaping all the consequences of sin, but must mainly be a salvation from the root or the sin nature that brought these other things upon us. All right. Now that. Now that, that's what reconciliation deals with, see. There are other aspects, and in the course of this thing, you know, I don't know how much I'm sticking tonight or will be sticking with our, our book, per se, but I know one thing, it's good to stick with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't go wrong. Even if you don't understand everything at the moment, you can't go wrong with the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> There are, other, there are other aspects of salvation that may could be looked a little more, we'll find many of them can't, but that may could be looked a little more as wor a work that he did for us. There is no way you can do that with reconciliation, and as we'll find, a bunch more. Um, all right, so... We were originally created in God's image. That's verse 26 here where we're at. Um, let me erase, let me just erase some of this because I, I want to make sure that we can kind of see as well as hear a bunch of this. I just, re I just accidentally, the name of the class is Redemption Truths and I just accidentally erased truths and now it's just, it's no, no teaching. 
It's not truths. It's just the real reality in him. <clears throat> Even my eraser is guided by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we got, uh, let's see, we got to draw us out a tree here. Yeah, I know. This is, this, this is the, the famous moose tree. <laughs> Okay, and then there's this other tree. The, I know the branches look a little funny like this one. The branches look a little funny in this one and in this one here, but that's the best I could draw it. I'm not that good. Uh, we're originally created in God's image, amen? Okay. Before the fall, Adam was presented with two different kinds of trees. Okay? Two different kinds of trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Okay? Um, clearly, there was a kind that God did not want him to have anything to do with, and that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, don't put that on the inside of you. Don't put that kind of thing on the inside of you. He did, you know, well, you know, there's stuff that I'll say here that hopefully will address that. Um, but the name of this class is Reconciliation Based on Kind on the kind that you are. All right. Now, it's not in my notes. I didn't want to go into it a whole lot. But um, God makes Adam. Before that, he makes all these animals and everything. And so then he makes Adam, and he's single, and he's looking at the lion and the lioness, and he's looking at the different beasts, and he's looking at all of that, and he's going, they have one after their kind. Amen? I mean, we're all familiar with that. That shouldn't be foreign to anybody. Uh, but God says, okay, I'm going to take care of this. So he puts Adam to sleep, and you know the Hebrew there. It's like a death, and he opens him up. He opens his side up like Jesus crucified. Takes, takes something that is not dirt like what he was, but what takes of him and creates from what is him something of his kind because it is him. Right. right, I mean, right, okay. All right, but then Adam and Eve go and they turn right around and they sin and they take of another kind and now he's the single man. Now he's looking for one after his kind. You know, I think we always see poor Adam's <laughs> dilemma. What about poor God? Didn't last long. Didn't last long. And he spends chapter after chapter, verse after verse, book after book, trying to communicate. He's not even trying to do it yet. He's just trying to communicate something of what? Something of his head. Something he sat there as God went, dang, hey, I got an idea. No. It's not of his head. It's of his heart. Yeah. 
and he doesn't have it. All right, so Adam and Eve sinned. Now listen carefully to this. It was not a moral sin, such as murder or rape or blasphemy or other evil actions. It was a sin of kind. Amen. They changed kinds. And at that point, folks, at that point, God had done nothing but make kind for kind. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, if God was busy at all, he was busy with his heart. These are pictures of my heart, he said. This two together, and this, having this kind, and this kind, and this kind. And, and, then, and then see my heart for, for Adam? Not having his kind? And see the length that I'm willing to go, death? And wounding to bring out just like the church was birthed out of Christ crucified? I mean, don't just see the events. Don't just teach the events. See what God's going through. That was all pretty much. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the, that's the earth until somebody broke kind. Until they took and they put the very one, because God knew it would change their kind, and it did. And now there's a breach. Now there's a wall. Now there's separation. Now there's sin. Now there's murder. Now there's every possible thing um, from that. All right. So to sin was to take into your being and become of another kind. All right, so I, this is rather long, so I'm not going to write all this one on the board. But it's called the results of a kind change, changing of kind. Okay? I'll just read it through fast and then go back slowly. Spiritual death and separation from God, physical death and eternal separation, then you know, and, and with that eternal punishment. All right. Well, death. What I mean, just just considering the meaning of death. I mean, what is death? You know, we always, you know, we're so funny. You know, I don't know. We see death as annihilation. And God sees it as separation. It is separation. Separation. The day that you eat, you will be separated from me. And, 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 and how? Okay. Now, at this point, stop. Each and every one of you, and try to picture what, how our theological um, um, understanding pictures that. But try to get past that also and picture it how God saw it. We see the fall of mankind and therefore it brought, you know, it, it was sin and then sin brought death and death brought hell. And so now Jesus, now Jesus has got to come and he's got to save us from hell and he's got to save us from sin and he's got to save us from the list that we had up here. And you understand what I'm saying? I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that's, that's not really understanding the real issue on God's part, is it? That's really kind of looking at things just from our part without any real understanding of his heart. I mean, it's possibly the only conclusion we could come up with. You, you understand what I mean when I say that? I mean, if you don't know his heart in this matter and you don't see what this means to him, then it just becomes, oh, well, we sin. And sin has brought death. And death, again, the, the definition becomes, you know, annihilation. And so I need salvation from annihilation. Okay. But, I mean, 
And death doesn't mean annihilation. You know, I mean, or ceasing to exist except in terms of separation. You know, I mean, if you die physically, your, your spirit and soul separate from your body. Separation. Separation, not annihilation. Not even ceasing to exist. You know, eternal, you know, you can call it hell, you can say hell, but it's really nothing more than eternal separation from God. Yes. I mean, it's separation. <laughs> you know, dying spiritually, separation. Okay, but if we comprehend that, then we must take the next step and comprehend that it's a separation of kind, because it is, <laughs> and, it, and it is that not because I say it is, God has to show you, and you know what Brother Randy says <laughs> at this stage, don't go by what I say, don't sit there and Suck it up and believe it as if it's the truth. If it's true, God should confirm his word, and he's going to confirm his word, not my preaching. Can I get amen on that? That's what we want. That's what all of us want. Our hearts are after the Lord, so that's what we want. So we're not afraid to not swallow the man up there, you know, Brother Randy's teaching. We're not, you know, and we're not afraid to kind of go, well, wait a minute, I don't, I don't know that I see that, or da-da-da-da big deal. You won't see it unless the Holy Spirit opens your eyes. And guess what? If it's not true, you'll never see it. So, I'm either a heretic or a really man of God. I don't know. You figure it out. <laughs> Mallory's going, I know what you are. No, so go ahead. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and I know, I know we don't have all the microphones out to be able to pick up what Mallory just said, but what was that about cheetahs? I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> but it was really good, and I'll never be able to say it the way she did because she's she's onto something. Um, uh, but the gist of it, I think, is, is just that because, we're, because we are separated and we live in that, that's all we know. We're born in it, and, you know, we have no clue the effects upon his heart. And, and I like the statement that you made. To him, it is death because he's lost. I mean, picture, come on, picture Adam wandering around for, you know, uh, no sin now. Picture, picture them not sinning. But before Eve, and he wanders around for 2,000 years on the earth, wanting, you know, wondering why everybody has their kind and he can't have his. Okay, now picture the Lord for 4,000 years or 6,000 years or eternity, or, you know, past, whatever. That this reality to him is more, that's what I, I always try to get this across. It's not theology to him. This isn't a religion to him. He's not going, you know, well, we need to stick with the code. You know, <laughs> you know He's not doing that. He's, he's, he's moving by his heart, not his head. And he, and he, and now I'm going to jump back to some of our few classes. And he is restrained from doing anything based on righteousness, based on justice. And you understand what I'm saying? His love is still there. God's love never ceased. 
but he can't move apart from that other part of him. And besides, let me just put it in these words, and, and I know love is greater than this, but I'm just saying, just loving us and getting over sin or being of a different kind is not real love anyway. It's not his love. You know. And you can go all the way through, folks. I mean, you, you can see this if the if if you, you know, if the Holy Spirit wills, you'll go through and you'll say, okay, you know, these dumb, you know, I'm saying this the parenthesis, they're not dumb. These dumb statutes put in the uh, uh, the the Leviticus and all this stuff. When you sow your field, don't mix seeds. Don't mix kinds, you know. And so to this day, you see, you see a garden, you know, in a row, and it's got a little label. This is what this is. <laughs> this is what this is. And, you know, we say, well, that's for organization. Don't mix kinds. <laughs> it's deeper than, you know, let's be organized for God. Let's don't. Let our organi let what is organized about us be the oneness of the same life and the same mind. Okay. And now that being said, I don't have a problem with Cassie organizing the conference and what have you. But I tell you, you know, I know that all of you, when we get involved in these things, we try to hear from the Lord about these things. We're not playing at this. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't mixing uh, uh, Je uh, Jezebel with, with God's king Ahab weaken him? Wouldn't mixing uh, Delilah with Samson weaken him? I mean, you're exactly right. You know, I mean, you, you, know, you see it in the chemical analysis of that, but you also see it in the spiritual results of it in the Bible. And, you know, there's, uh, my mind, I forgot them now, but I mean, a few minutes ago, I just ran through and just saw so many, like, don't mix the seed or whatever. Just, you know, for example, when they came back from the captivity and the Lord said, you know, don't you know, mix in with the, the women of the nations and stuff like that. And, of course, immediately they did. And, uh, and Nehemiah, was it, or, or Ezra, Ezra? <coughs> fell on their face and just, oh, my God, you know. Well, we, we look at that and we read that, and we think that's all about sin. Well, it is. The sin of ha being of another kind, or being of another kind is the sin nature than God. Well, it is. It is. It is. Okay, so, uh, and, and what that's doing or what it's meant to do <coughs> is to help us to, you know, get out of a, you know, it can be a very religious mode where all we're doing is we're dealing with sin, which is basically hand-picked items you understand what I'm saying? I mean, handpicked out, well, don't do this, okay, do this, or don't do that, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, how far can that go? I mean, you can handpick and handpick. I mean, there's a, there's a particular denomination, folks, that um, uh, they don't want you to have any musical instruments in their services because there's no, it's not written in anywhere in the New Testament that they had musical instruments. Okay, well... <clears throat> that's just one example, you know, that's just one example. I mean, you know, there's no, you know, no slander to anybody. There's Amish and whatever. They want, the, well, there were no cars, so we don't, you know, we don't drive a car, you know. Well, look at those clothes, buddy. You should be wearing robes. That's what they were wearing back there, you know what I mean? I mean, I, 
and I'm not trying to be mean. I, I really am not. And I know some of these things can sound that way. But you know what? To get a real point across, you, you kind of got to shake some people sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, I, and it's not a mean shake. It's like, you know, it's like somebody asleep, you know, and they won't wake up. <laughs> you know, if they're asleep, you go, honey, wake up. You know what I mean? But if they won't wake up, you go, get up. You know, <laughs> there's a fire. <laughs> But there is this thing, there is this thing where, where sin to us is nothing more than a set of rules, and God is not ruled by a set of rules, nor would he rule by a set of rules other than the law shows us the sin nature, which is not after his kind. Purpose of the law, I mean, that's what it says, and I don't have time to get into all that, but it's there in, in uh, <laughs> Galatians and Romans and <clears throat> um, so uh, these consequences of being of another kind set into motion these waves of, of things that are negative but the priests and the and the scribes and the Pharisees and the whatever, over centuries and centuries, never discovered the original sin. The original sin, which tainted the whole creation of man which meant it made everybody of another kind. As in Adam, all die, so in Christ, in, as in Adam, all die, so in Christ, all are made alive. So there's an all of Adam, and there's an all of Christ, and it's a difference of kind, and it only uses those, those two scriptures or, or on a balance beam, you know, there's this kind and there's this kind, and the, so, can I reread that statement that I made earlier because I, I just was so impacted by it when the Lord gave it to me. Salvation at its height cannot be just the act of saving us from the effects of a sin nature, such as sickness, hell, judgment, punishment for sins, or reaping all the consequences of sin, but must mainly be a salvation from the root or sin nature that brought these other things upon us that brought these other things upon us. So what do we do? We set up theological schools and we set up teaching and we point at everything but the root. You know what I mean? And we go when we attack that tree, like this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we pull off all the bad and it's still not his kind. You say, well, it's got nothing but good on it. Trust me, the bad will grow back. It's even more powerful since you pulled it all off. You know, if you know anything about how this works. We never discover the difference of kind. We never make the root the issue. We never, and, and worse than that, worse than that, we never see what the Lord lost in this deal. Or even care. Well, I've got this problem. Consequence of my sin, I'm reaping what I sow, but fix it. You see what I mean? I mean, that attitude, can you see that attitude? It's like, you know, well, this is happening, and, you know, and it's just a consequence of being another kind. He's going, I don't want to fix your, you know, your fruit from that tree. I told you to not touch it. <laughs> he goes, well, you know, yeah, but we messed up. We sinned. And he's going, you don't even know what you're saying. You did more than sin. You, you, I gave you one after your kind, Adam. Very first example. I, I felt for you. And now you have no feelings for me in my, my situation, which is the exact same that you went through, but you want me to rush to your consequences And think about so many times the prophets say, you know, 
but you don't consider me they're through the pro but you don't consider me you don't you're not da 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 you know you you still offer your offerings and you do this and you do that i hate those you know and you go you're the one who told us to do it why are you hating it you know what i mean i wouldn't done it if i knew you hated it he doesn't hate it he loves the reality of christ crucified he hates you doing it in that other kind that is not him okay well, now remember, <laughs> this is about reconciliation. He has dealt with this, and in a, in a wonderful way. But don't you think, and I'm just asking you, don't you think it would be important that if we didn't get anything else out of this, we sort of got the Father's heart, or we got God's heart, and we, we began to discover this Father heart that, that wants participation of kind in this, and wants to father that forth and and uh, and that these things should be more important to us than the rest we get from the realization of reconciliation that's quite a little phrase there rest we get from the realization of reconciliation yes Well, in a very real sense, and this, you, get, you get this throughout the, particularly through the prophets, you have left me. You know, I mean, this is, this is, but see, here's what we do. We go, well, you know, I was real committed for a while, but now I'm not, so I've left him. That's what he means. <laughs> oh, my God, you know, and he's just going. And then when we say that, you know, and then we, we share that with the congregation, you know, thinking we're really touching something precious he's just going look you don't even get this and and you know what a lot of his responses in the prophets is you don't get this he gets upset over it because he's you know i've sent you my word i've given you signs i've done this and that i've i have stretched out my hands all day long to a hard stiff neck and rebellious generation yes He did. He did. And when he spoke for God, guess what? He spoke for God. He spoke for God. That's right. Glory to God. I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Not preaching sermons and not d disseminating doctrine and stuff, but my God, we need to be speaking for him or, or as it were, letting the Holy Spirit bring, bring this forth. And not just in services, but in our, our time in the word and this sort of thing. You know, I'm just going to tell you, folks, that, you know, it takes, a, it takes a while of saturation to get soft enough where that starts popping out of the word again. You know, I mean, it does. It, it takes a while, and we're, we're in that season, aren't we? Yes, we are. I mean, we are in that season, and, and, um, but, but thank God we're not, you know, like in October now talking about it. There's still a period of time where we can go back again. I mean, and, you know, in these classes or anybody's classes, I mean, I know, I know all of you guys are, are disseminating the heart of the Lord in this, and... and um, in those classes, uh, when you hear, when something does that, you bow your heart. Yes, yes. And you, every, the rest of the class blocks out for that moment as you say, "Oh God, let this be true in me," or or open my eyes. You know, really. I mean, I. You know what? I've even stopped praying. Open my eyes a whole lot. I mean, it's not. It's still there. It's in the scriptures. But I say, open my heart to your heart there you go stop now pray <laughs> open my heart to your heart see that's what I need to do I need about every 30 37 seconds stop and say stop now pray <laughs> but I mean but it, you can't do that because because only the 
only you know what the Lord is touching you, you know, and someone else, it comes a few minutes later or something like that. And this is about participation, and I don't mean participating with him in something, but, but certainly we want to participate with him in what he's saying and then make that a participation into his life. But if you're not even participating with him, you're not even hearing it, you're not praying that, you're not seeking, you're not, you know, seek ye and ye shall find. Okay, but did you know the actual Greek there is keep on seeking? Yeah, it is a continuing thing of uh, he that seeketh findeth. And that is a continual reality because how in the world, I mean, what is it we're seeking that would, we'd ever stop after we got it? You know what I mean? Oh, I got it now. I got all that the Lord has. Yes. Do it all the time. That's certainly a religious <laughs> thought. <laughs> You know, that's a good point. I'll end with this because we're getting over just a little bit here. But, you know, that's a really good point because what if a lot of our condemnation over scriptures and stuff because we don't measure up is really over a religious view of those scriptures and not as very hard? For, because what you just said, Joan, was that pray without ceasing is not necessarily in a certain setting where every, you know, we acknowledge it and we feel good and, you know, because it looks religious and everybody thinks we look religious or something, you know, but rather asking the Lord to reinterpret all of our condemnations in light of the truth. And it would just, wouldn't it be funny if he just went, blew on all those and they went away and he went, oh, I can walk in freedom. This is really based on life. That would be a good prayer. Amen. Stop and pray now. <laughs> okay, let's take a break and we'll come back. <laughs>